Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. That's right. Winning Cures Everything NFL Previews. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. <sighs> Let's go on and talk about this. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six wonderful sports books. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. They've got a lot of exciting things happening down there. Go check it out for yourself. Tunicatravel.com. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you comment in. Let us know what we've gotten right, what we got wrong, what you agree with, what you don't, etc. We welcome all of it. Now, if you're going to trash talk, you got to be okay with taking some trash talk because we will do that as well. Uh, if you are listening on the podcast, hit that subscribe button. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review. Share the show out with your buddies. We appreciate all of the support. As always, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at GaryWCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. And the show is at Winning Cures. You can also get us on Facebook, etc. Everything's over at winningcureseverything.com. Jumping into the AFC North, which is the Ravens, the Bengals, the Browns, and the Steelers, and the NFC North today, which is the Bears, the Lions, the Packers, and the Vikings. You ready to fire in? First up, the Baltimore Ravens. Last year, 10-6, and six, made the playoffs. To win the division this year, they are plus 300. Their strength of schedule is 23rd in the league, so that is the 23rd softest. Or most difficult, but then the, uh, what, what is that, ninth or 10th softest? Um, turnover margin, they were 22nd in the league last year at minus three. Kind of to be expected with a rookie quarterback. That's right. Uh, over under is eight this year. The juice on the over is minus 130. Juice on the under is plus 110. They're a projected favorite in nine games this year. Uh, head coach John Harbaugh, uh, the offensive coordinator, is Greg Roman this year. Uh, he was the tight ends coach last season. They were number 26 in yards per play on offense last year. Averaged 5.2 yards per play. On defense, number one in the NFL in yards per play. Correct. Gave up 4.7. Uh, their defensive coordinator, Don Martingale, uh, he's awesome. On defense, they signed Earl Thomas, Pernell McPhee, Shane Ray. Uh, they drafted uh, Jalen Ferguson, defensive end from Louisiana Tech, who led all of the NCAA for all-time sacks. On offense, they drafted Hollywood Brown, wide receiver out of Oklahoma. Uh, they signed running back Mark Ingram. Greg Roman, I don't know if you remember this, he is the one that uh, was the offensive coordinator for Harbaugh. He was the one that uh, that coordinated Kaepernick to a 25-14 and 14 record in San Francisco without him. For Jim, you're talking about, not John. Yeah, yeah, for Jim. Yep, got it. Um, now, Kaepernick, 25-14 and 14 in San Francisco, without Greg Roman, Kaepernick's record was 3-16. and 16. Now, Lamar Jackson had an 84.5 passer rating last season. That was higher than the last four seasons of Joe Flacco. Correct. Pretty crazy. Uh, they led the league in defensive early down success rate. Uh, only three teams since 2013 have won 10-plus games with minus three or worse turnover ratio. Um, they were three and four in one score games and they had a terrible turnover rate or turnover luck and yet still won 10 games. I have got this team at eight and eight. I think they are right on the number. I still want to see Lamar Jackson improve, but they brought in a bunch of weapons, uh, that I think this team could be really good. I just I I just want to see it first. Am I maybe I'm crazy for that? Like I thought they overachieved last year, and I think that the defense maybe maybe regresses just a hair. Uh, yards per play on offense, I think will probably get a little bit better. I think the turnover luck changes just a touch, but I still think that this is like an average team, and I feel like the Browns are better. I feel like the Steelers could be better. Uh, the Bengals, I who knows what to think of them, but. The Ravens, like I, I think this this has nine and seven to seven and nine, somewhere in between there written all over it. So I've got them at eight and eight. So I, I thought this team was going to be a, a nine and seven team. So before before I started looking at the schedule and going through wins and losses, which I kind of hate doing, I would have just talked them up to a nine and seven team 
competing for a wild card spot, what they did last year. I think this team's going to be good. I don't think they're going to turn the ball over very much this year because they've made it clear we're actually going to go back to the 30s in football and we're going to run the ball over and over and over and over again. Hard to turn it over that way unless you just fumble it all all the time. Just Teams just don't do. Yeah, no, well, I'll tell you this. When they had Joe Flacco last year, they were the number one most pass-heavy team in, yeah. in the league. And then when they flipped it to Lamar Jackson, they were the number one most run-heavy run heavy team. team. And, and somehow made it work. Yeah, oh, no, not just somehow like, made it work. And then, like, like they made it. Really, I think really Lamar well. Jackson's really good. Yeah, I like him. I'm I'm sold you, on him. You and I, I was, have been. We we are at odds on him. That's right. Coming and, out, and out of I want college. To see it. Yeah. Coming out of college, this guy won a Heisman Trophy. This guy had no problems throwing the football. His percentage completion percentage was low because he was throwing sixty yard passes. I mean, it's the same argument for why Josh Allen's completion percentage was low. Like, anybody who's throwing the ball 40, 50 yards down the field is going to have a lower completion percentage than people throwing it three yards. Hey, Lamar Jackson, in college, and we'll continue this argument, because in college, whenever he played against good defenses, was average at best. But when he played but against that's mediocre not, that's not a fair defenses. comparison because his team never, ever, ever had an offensive line. Louisville had a very soft, weak Offensive line. They weren't one of those teams that just has big hog mollies that can hold people up. So when okay. they played good defenses, their line got just completely blown up. That's a, no, you're so right. it throws everything off. It's not college and pros. You just cannot compare that way. But but when he had time, he had no problem having accuracy. The Ravens have a pretty good offensive line. They're, they're going to be a stable team. I kind of wanted them to be higher. I got them seven and nine. I got them seven and nine because I think they're gonna lose games that they that they probably should win, just because I think they're gonna have a hard time scoring points. Yeah, I don't think they're. Gonna, I I kind of want to be wrong on this. Now I hate the city of Baltimore. They 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 took the Browns. They're my mortal enemy. They are my number one team out of all thirty two teams out there that I despise more than anyone else. But when Lamar went there, I kind of had to draw a line in the sand and say. Has time passed? Can I get over this? Because I really like this guy. <laughs> I was in the tank for Lamar, and I'm still in the tank for Lamar. Um, I want him to be better. I think I think Greg Roman coming in makes it, it. I'm surprised that you picked him with a worse record than I did. Yeah, uh, but but like I said, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they're they're nine and seven. I literally just went through the schedule. I wrote wins. I wrote losses, and then I added it up when I was done with the entire all 32 teams. And then I said, how many games did this team win? And that's just what I went with. I didn't change it. Once again, not a good science. But, hey, but it, it, it works. It works. It's, okay. it's what I've got, and, and it's what I'm going to go with. All right, so I've got eight and eight. You've got I'm seven and nine. Seven and nine. Right. Um, they're, they're projected favorite in nine games. I, I think they'll so, end up being nine and seven. I just can't tell you where those games are going to be. I can understand that. Moving on, the Cincinnati Bengals, six and ten last year. Uh, finally... Marvin Lewis, gone. We, we did not know when that was going to happen, but last year, to win the division championship, they were plus 1,400. Their strength of schedule is number 24 in the league. Turnover margin, they were number 17 last year, plus one. Head coach is Zach Taylor. He is going to call plays this year. Uh, offensive coordinator Brian Callahan, who was Oakland's quarterback's coach, and defensive coordinator Lou Anarums. Is that how you said? it? you have any idea? I'm going right. to go with you. New York Giants defensive backs coach from last year. They are a projected favorite in two games this year. Their over-under is six. The juice on the over, minus 125. The juice on the under, plus 105. Um, look, Zach Taylor was the Rams quarterback's coach. Anybody that had anything to do with the Rams coach? Sean McVay. It, well, Sean McVay. Is it McVay? Oh, McDermott's the, uh, the – we did this last year. Where we were so confused in the, in the song. Song. I got it this year. Total offense, uh, yards per play, they were number 24 last year, 5.3. Defense, number 29, gave up 6.1 yards per play. Uh, they started 3-1 and one last year with the NFL's number 7 ranked passing offense. They lost Tyler Eifert to injury immediately after that. Then they lost their second string tight end. And the passing offense went in the tank. Right, they were so successful throwing to the tight end, and then when they didn't have their guys, 
they finished the season three and nine. And I think that's more along what this team is. Um, I don't know whether to trust Zach Taylor. I don't know. How, he's going to be calling the plays. But I don't think he's ever done that. So, you know, they, they drafted left tackle Jonah Williams to shore up the offensive line. He's out for the season. Uh, they signed guard John Miller. They drafted linebacker Jermaine Pratt and defensive tackle Ronell Wren. They didn't really make any major offseason acquisitions. I don't feel like they improved a whole lot. Again, the over under is six. They're only favored in two games. I've got them at five and eleven. Got them two and fourteen. I think they win those two games. Ooh. They're, they're favored. I don't like this team at all. At I, all. I think that head coaching matters in the NFL. Yeah. I think this this whole for a while, it was everybody wanted to get the next Belichick. And so they hired Belichick assistants. But nobody hired, like, three guys from one staff for Bill's team. They hired, like, the second in command. And then the next year, somebody hired that second in command. And the next year, somebody. Last year, four coaches got a job because they knew Sean McVay. I think the Bengals got the fourth of those coaches. At yeah. some point in time, we have to stop trying to... I will say this, it's better than what we thought it was going to be because the rumor was that Hugh Jackson was going to get the job. Yes. Now, this guy is, yeah, you're right. They'd be an 0-16 I, team with you. But I don't know what to trust with Zach Taylor. I don't I don't know what to make of this team. I'm just going to have to wait and see. I don't. I have I don't, no the idea. The guy's never ran a locker room before. Like, I, I let's say it, he knows how to draw up plays. Let's say he knows how to call plays. At some point in time, you have to be able to, you know what's great about Sean McDermott? Not Sean McDermott. Sean McVay? Is is he hired a defensive coordinator that is an old wily veteran that used to be a head coach and said, I'm gonna let you run the defense and I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna try to be all things to all people. You know what the Bengals did? They hired the fourth guy to Sean McVay and then a defensive backs coach to run the defense. And we don't know who's the CEO in the building making hard, real decisions that are going to affect games. I think those things matter. I yeah. just do. I think it's going to be really hard for them to win football games. I think Andy Dalton is maybe the most stable player on this roster, and and he's like the model of six and ten. But at the same time, I don't, I don't know that. I think it's going to be really hard for them to win football games. I I can understand that. I can AJ Green is out, out for a couple for a couple of games. We don't know how bad that is. I know he had surgery. I know he tore ligaments. Like I, I don't know that he's just no, going to come back and be AJ Green. They're saying that he's he'll be back. You know, early in the season. That's right. Point. Week but, four, week seven. I don't I don't know what that means. No, there's but, no. But what does he look like when he comes back? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what does the team do when he gets back? Like, or up till then? Like, are they? Are they completely out of it by then? Have they won any games? I, I don't know the answer to any of that. No, I, I agree. So I've got them 5-11. and 11, You've got them 2-14. and 14. This team scares me. Yeah. yeah. I think they're bad. Next up, the Cleveland Browns. This is Chris's team. Uh, what, one of them. So he, Come on he now. grew up a, a Patriots fan, but married into a Browns family. He's been a Brownie for years. 7-9 and nine in 2000. Well, 7-8-1. Seven and, seven, eight and one. Seven, Sorry. eight and one. Seven, eight and one. Give me that extra. Last year. Division championships, plus 150 this year. So, pretty good odds. Strength of schedule, number 30, fairly soft. Turnover margin, they were number eight in the league last year, plus seven. Uh, head coach is Freddie Kitchens. Uh, the offensive coordinator is Todd Munkin. Their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. Love this Former team. Arizona defensive coordinator. Uh, not defensive, head coach. Uh, head coach. Um, they drafted cornerback Greedy Williams on defense. They traded for Odell Beckham Jr. They signed running back Kareem Hunt uh, on defense. They dra- I'll tell you who I think will be the steal of the draft is middle linebacker Mac Wilson. I think he's awesome. He's a playmaker. But anyway, yards per play last year, they were number 12 on offense. 5.8 yards per play on defense. They were number 15. 5.6 yards per play given up. They are a projected favorite in eight games. Their over-under is nine. The juice on the over is minus 130. On the under, it is plus 110. Uh, I'm going to tell you, this is an interesting story about Hugh Jackson. Like, this team obviously has talent. We saw it in the last eight games last year. Since 2006, 
No NFL team has had a losing record with a plus 11 turnover margin. Now, that's, that's just for the season, right? This team was plus 11 through eight games last year. They were 2-5-1. and 2-5-1. and one. Hugh Jackson was awful. Now, I don't know what kind of a coach Freddie Kitchens is going to be. But I do trust him more than I trusted Hugh Jackson. I think this team has talent. I think they thrive on chaos. Everybody talks about all the egos and whether or not they'll be able to keep them contained and whatnot. Some teams don't need it to be contained, right? Like they, Baker Mayfield loves the ego, loves talking, loves all that, and I think that the players feed off of it. He seems to have no problem keeping these receivers in check. Yeah. I mean, which is crazy so for far, a second year guy. He's gotten in Odell Beckham's ear. You know what? Maybe that was Eli's problem. Maybe Eli, the all shucks, real nice guy, love him, one of the best dudes ever in the NFL. Maybe that's not what Odell needs. Maybe yeah. Odell needs somebody that's going to get in that ass. No, you're right. Uh, Kareem Hunt suspended for the first eight games. Yeah. That's okay. They got Nick Chubb. They got other guys back there. Uh, Duke Johnson, you think he's going to play, right? Duke Johnson got traded to the tight. Uh, oh, did he? Texans. I didn't see. I never even saw that. Yep. Um, so. They've got running backs, though. They're going to be fine. They're going to be Nick, fine. Nick Chubb's a stud. I've got them at 9-7 and seven this year. I, I think that they improve. I think they get better. But I've got them 9-7. and seven. What say you? I, I know that there's crazy hype on this team. That's ever, what scared me off. And, and that's the problem. Is The only reason people are backing away is, well, there's just too much hype. There's just too much hype. You know what there is? There's too much talent. Yeah, there's, so there's a lot of some, talent. But at it, some point in time, first time head talent, coach, talent has to matter. The first time head coach, but he's surrounded by two guys that are coordinators that have been in the league for a long time. Todd Munkin was in the running for a lot of head coaching jobs. Yeah. Chose to go to Cleveland. Made it clear, I'd rather be an OC in a place that that is fun than take a head coaching job right now at a place where I might be one and done because there's chaos, there's turmoil, and 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 all those types of things. See, that, there's a difference there. Is it here? I think there's chaos. I don't think there's turmoil. Tur- the turnover, just the GMs getting fired all the time. Yeah. The head coach gets fired all the time. All this other stuff. No, the it, stability here is way different than it's been for years. And it's only that way because of John Dorsey. Yes, John Dorsey, because the Haslam's are chaos, and they are the 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 definition of lack of stability. But John Dorsey is an adult in the room that comes in. He makes football decisions. Now, a lot of times they're unpopular decisions because if a guy is troubled and has problems, he's willing to bring that guy in the locker room. If a guy, you know, is Odell Beckham and has ego, he's not afraid of these things. Let's yeah. get him in here and we'll control him. We'll figure it out. I think this is the most talented team on in the league on both sides of the football. Now, we all know all those stars. That are no, on they're, the they're young. Side. They're not. They're not exactly the most experienced yet. It doesn't but, matter. But still, I don't think it matters. They're still they're, the best. They're still. They're still the most talented talent. team in the in the NFL from top to bottom. Defensively, we don't know all those stars. But you you talked about Mac. You talked about Greedy um, um, last year with uh, with Ward uh, being taken at the cornerback. Miles Garrett. My pick this year, and this I promise you this is not the homer in me. Now, my record, absolutely the homer in me. Okay, I'm going to be honest about that. Miles Garrett <laughs> is without question the number one overall favorite. He won't be betting-wise to be Defensive Player of the Year. You're going to have your Aaron Donalds. You're going to have your Khalil Max, and those guys are freaks. You're going to have a couple other guys that have bigger names. What Miles Garrett has done in the, this offseason to, to get himself ready for this year might be the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, he's you you were showing me a picture of him getting held on a play getting, getting held. A, now I know that was in a preseason game against the the Redskins and their offensive line is trash. But but even still, like this guy is what you're seeing built just He's going he's, to wreck people's worlds. I, I'm gonna tell you, I have this team and I know that this is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Hear me out when I say that I understand this is ridiculous. You don't can do, don't give me some 14 and 2. You crap. can do whatever you want with this information. All right. 14 and 2 <laughs> is insane. That's a lot. I've got them 13 and 3. <laughs> I, I think this team is really good. I love listen, Freddie uh. Kitchen scares me because he's the unknown. 
But you know who's not unknown? And I know he's not going to call plays, but he's still going to get the offense ready. There's still going to be a vertical attack, aggressive attacking vertical def offense. Is going to Todd Munkin? This guy is an adult in the room that knows how to control these egos. He had to deal with Jameis Winston. He had to deal with Mike Evans. He had to deal with the chaos at the running back uh, uh, position down in Tampa all these years. And a bad offensive line. He he's been there. He's done that. None of these things scare him. Yeah, okay. I think offensively, Steve Wilkes, Steve Wilkes is an, you know the reason Steve Wilkes got a head coaching job as a defensive coordinator? Because he was really good at that job. Yeah. Defensive coordinators don't get head coaching jobs today. Now, yeah, he was one and done. That speaks more to the Arizona's style of, of, of how they run a program than anything else. I, I cannot tell you how much I love this team. I think, I think they're going to be good. I think they're going to win this division. I don't know that that's going to be close. I think they're going to be three or four games better than everybody. I think that them being the stepchild, the bastard child of this division is over. And now I can believe that, but I just – three or four games better than everybody. I mean, you forget who's next in the, uh, in the list. We're going to get there. Moving on, the Pittsburgh Steelers, nine and se – well, nine, six, and one last year, uh, did not make the they, – they didn't win nine, did they? Nope. No, they, went, they went eight, six, and one. Yep, and didn't make the playoffs. That's it. I swear, when I write these things down sometimes. The, I don't the, know. the, the tie game always messes you up. Yeah, it really does. All right, so uh, nine, no, nine, eight, seven, and one. Eight, seven, and one. Boom. Division champs, they'd be plus 140 at Vegas right now. Strength of schedule is number 26. Uh, they're going to face a projected 127 wins. Turnover margin, they were 28th in the league last year at minus 11. Head coach is Mike Tomlin, uh, the offense coordinator, Randy Feedner, defense coordinator, Keith Butler. Uh, all those are the same as they were. Over under is 9.5. To go over is minus 120. To go under is even money, plus 100. They are a projected favorite in 10 games this year. They brought in wide receiver Dante Moncrief. Uh, he's not the talent that A.B. was. Uh but Antonio Brown is, is a different kind of beast. They signed cornerback Steven Nelson and inside linebacker Mark Barron this year. Uh, I feel like this year might be addition by subtraction with getting rid of the, the turmoil, good word that you used earlier, with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Uh, you get kind of the crazy, the, the turbulence out of the room, and I think it could be better for everybody. They were number five in total yards per play last year, 6.1. They were number six in defensive yards per play, gave up 5.3 last year. I like this team a lot more this year without all the mess. I think they are back to just focusing on football. They got something else to play for now. Uh, the wide receivers coach going into the second year. We just found this out, uh, just passed away this morning, right? Um, so they, they've got something to play for there. I've got them at 10 and 6. I, I think the schedule sets up well for them. I think they're mad about what happened last year. I think they're glad to be rid of the, the locker room cancers that they had. And I think they're going to be better for it. So it's interesting that you say they're glad to be rid of the locker room cancers. I think there is addition by subtraction when some things happen. The problem is, is they had Le'Veon Bell gone last year. Yeah, he was it, never in the locker room, and he never was there, and that didn't make him better. They missed the playoffs for the first no, 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 time no, no. God they, knows how long. But they thought that he was going to be reporting eventually. It doesn't matter. He never showed he, up. Agreed, he was but, never but, in the locker room. But then it became a thing where the current players were talking about him in the media, and they kept getting asked about it. It's, it's at some added point, pressure. At some point in time weight. when they step on Sunday field, they never went into a game thinking he was going to be there. Okay. And they and they underachieved massively. And that's with Antonio Brown having still a pretty great season. Now, not your typical Antonio Brown season, no. but still a pretty great but, season. But didn't even show Losing, up for Week 17. Yeah, week I mean, 17's irrelevant, though. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, you're playing for a possible playoff berth. If, if your Brownies are knocked off the Ravens, they were in the playoffs. Here's, here's my issue with this team. You got rid of two Divas. You're absolutely right. You got rid of those yeah. two guys. You still got one Diva on the team. And that's Big Ben. Yeah. He has, I don't believe, and the problem is, is the organization wants to make him the only leader in the locker room. They've made that clear. They've openly came out and said, like, like verbally backed him being the 
the face of leadership in this locker room. I don't think that he can lead. I don't think people are going to really follow him. I think he comes across as very fake all the time. He goes on the media saying, Antonio Brown's got to stop talking to the media. Le'Veon Bell's got to stop doing this to the media. But then it's okay for him the next day to go out and call out other players. Like, wait a minute. You can't say that one guy can't do it and then you do it. This is he's he's inconsistent as hell when it comes to leadership qualities. On the field, dude's got a cannon. Juju Smith Schuster, the only receiver that scares me. Moncrief, and close to what Moncrief used to be. He's not gonna be what Juju was last year if we yeah. think he's just gonna take that second role. Okay. I don't think Washington's gonna be that. I don't think any of the rookies are gonna be that. I think Juju has potential to set all kinds of receiving records this year. I don't know that much else scares me on this offense. Their defense was good, not great last year. I don't know how improved they're going to be. I think this is an 8-8 eight and eight team. And I think their biggest problem is still leadership. I think they still have – they won't have drama like they've had before because they don't have stars that have that kind of power or influence right now. But – but Big Ben is still a diva. Okay. And he's still running that locker room. And and I, I just don't know that I would put that much power and influence in him. Okay. Uh, now, of course, at the end of the week, in case you were curious, we're going to give out our Super Bowl picks, our favorite over-unders as far as Vegas betting lines. Uh, we're going to give out our playoff picks, etc. So make sure you tune in for Friday's picks. 